Hey guys, Marissa at KitchenTableStamper.com. We're going to go through this You're Wonderful note card today. This is a card for coffee and a card tomorrow. Um, I have a drop-in every other Wednesday in my Rolling Meadows home studio in um, the Chicago area. And all adult crafters are welcome. Coffee and a card is a drop-in. This is the card that we're going to make. We make a card, I've got a pot of coffee, sometimes some goodies, um, we have a nice social time. Sometimes I like to teach a technique while we're making our coffee in a card or um, show off a new um, product. So this time we're going to be using our uh, Big Shot embossing mats. We're going to do some embossing on foil and we're going to do a fun stamping and coloring technique for our tree. So, if you're local to the Chicago area and you're interested in joining us for a coffee and a card, you can email me to rsvp marissa at kitchentablestamper.com or buzz over to the blog kitchentablestamper.com and click on the calendar page and that'll give you an idea of when coffee and a card is running. Um, it is a drop in, but if you RSVP, I know better how many materials to prepare. All right, so let's get started with our card here. Let me walk you through the Stampin' Up! supplies that you'll need for this, your wonderful note card. I have my Rooted in Nature bundle. We're getting to that time of year in the Stampin' Up! annual catalog where the bundles will be unbundled even if they don't retire. So Rooted in Nature and Nature's Roots Framelits uh, are available right now through June 3rd with a bundle discount where you can buy the stamp set and the framelits together and save 10%. So we'll be focusing on a lot of the bundles here as we wrap up the annual catalog because the bundle discount's a really nice little perk, but it's only offered in the first publication in which the um, products are offered. So Nature's Roots Framelits, Rooted in Nature stamp set, I've got my, um, I pulled out my Stampin' Pad in Basic Black. You can use Stays On for this um, or Memento, but I'm still really in love with the Stampin' Up Basic Black, so I'm going to use that one. Um, I've got my Big Shot embossing kit here. I've got the embossing pad and the blue mat you'll need for this technique. I've got some linen thread and my copper foil sheet. Now I just got some scraps of those two little embellishments. Uh, let's see here, what else do we need? I've got Stampin' Right markers in basic black, old olive and granny apple green. The pieces for my card will be on the printable project sheet so you don't have to jot down the measurements. You can just click over the links below the video if you're watching on YouTube in the details. When you get to the blog, the print, the link to print the PDF is always embedded right under the embedded video. All right, so you don't have to jot this down, but you can if you like. I've got a Whisper White card base, and this card base is eight and a half by five and a half, and I've scored it at four and a quarter. And I'm using the lightweight, the regular Whisper White cardstock, not the thick. It's not a very heavy card, so it's it's gonna work just fine with the um, Whisper White eight and a half by eleven cardstock. If you'd like to use the thick cardstock, you can go right ahead. Now, I've got a scrap of Whisper White, and any scrap will do. It's for stamping and die cutting our tree, so you're gonna probably want like two and a half um, or three by four, two and a half by three and a half. It's just for stamping and cutting. Now, for our sentiment, you'll need a piece that's four by one and three eighths. And my designer series paper is from Needlepoint Nook, and this one is called or, and this one is three and a half by one and three quarters. Okay, I think that covers the supplies that you'll need. Let's do some stamping here. I'm going to stamp this um, background. So we're going to randomly stamp with different leaves from Rooted in Nature. We'll stamp off the edges so we want to protect our surface. All right, I've got my my basic black ink, and I'm going to start with this three leaf image. And what I'm going to do is fill in 
kind of enlarged triangle pattern. And this will kind of give you a base for the, for the random. So I'm gonna stamp at an angle from each other and then complete the triangle. And I find that this helps me to get a random pattern that um, does have some sort of a pattern to it. Then I don't have too many of the same um, image all jumbled in one place. So you see then from these two, I made my triangle. Now from these two, I'll make a triangle. And then from these two, I'll make a triangle or I'll complete a triangle. So then once I've done that, I've got a little bit of structure. It's random stamping. That's not so random, I guess. Now I'm gonna fill in with this little, um, I don't know, it looks like a like a little ginkgo leaf or, leaf or something. And I'm gonna do the same kind of idea where I'm aiming for that like triangular placement, but we're also taking care to rotate the stamp each time and really try to fill in kind of closely. I want a pattern that's really filled in very close. So I've got my two and to kind of complete a triangle, I'd put another one maybe here. And I want to make sure that the stem is rotated. It's not going the same direction every time I stamp it. And then now from these guys to do something that's kind of triangular, I'm going to go off the edge here. And then from these two to do something that's kind of triangular, I'm going to fill right in this little space here. So I really find that this kind of imagining triangle placement really helps me to fill in. And then I'm probably gonna come back to each of these leaves to finish filling in, but now I'm gonna take this sprig and I'm gonna get the little sprig in here. So for the sprig, I'm doing that same thing. I'm looking for that fill-in triangle, triangular placement, and I want the stem to go a different direction each time. Does that help? Is anybody else a little bit intimidated by random stamping? It's not my strong suit. Okay, when you've got a background that you're satisfied with, You'll set that aside and let it dry for a bit. While we're stamping, let's get our greeting. I've got this, um, you are wonderful, and we want to stamp this right of center. We want to leave room for our tree and for our um, twine embellishment. So let's stamp the greeting, set that aside for a bit and let it dry. Okay, so while your sentiment and your background are drying, let's work on this tree. Now for our tree, we're going to ink the stamp with the Stampin' Right markers. And I've got a granny apple green, and I'm coloring in all of the leafy areas on the tree. This is our lightest color, so that's where you're gonna start. You can layer the basic black and the old olive over the granny apple without any trouble. So you always start when you're doing a technique like this with your lightest color first. Then we'll take our granny apple green and we're just going to run a little bit of the granny apple green along the bottom edge of some of these little leafy branches. So now we've got two-tone effect. Then we're gonna use our basic black Stampin' Right marker and get the trunk of the tree. But then don't forget to grab these little areas right here where the trunk shows through the branches. Now you'll huff on the image. <sighs> and that just reactivates um, the ink and stamp. So we've got this great multicolor image, but let me show you that stamped image compared to my finished image because we're still going to add more texture and leafiness to this treetop. 
So now at this point, we're gonna take our old olive stamp and write marker and using that edge where we swiped the old olive onto the stamp as a guide all along the bottom edge of our tree top here, we're going to just dot with the old olive marker and just define the bottom edge of these branches, of these leafy spaces with dots of old olive. So you can see the difference between the branches that I've done and haven't done. You're really starting to get kind of a leafy texture this way. So you just keep on dotting all the branches on the bottom edge to make kind of a shadow underneath. All right, so I've done my old olive dots. Now I'm gonna go through and just mix in some granny apple dots. Now I'll go up a little bit higher with the granny apple dots, and I'll also go directly over the old olive dots. And when you do that, you'll see shades building as the granny apple ink kind of reactivates the old olive dots that you're stamping over and they blend a little bit. It's really gonna give your tree a lot of life. It takes an extra minute, but it's really so worth it when you get that texture, that beautiful natural texture against the crisp black and white background. Okay, so I'm happy with the texture of my tree. And I'm going to now at this point, just go in with my Stampin' Right and make the little spaces that are tree trunk a little bit darker. Connect any dots there. Now let's get the big shot. We're gonna do some die cutting and some embossing. Okay, we're back with our emboss or our big shot and we're set up for die cutting. We have the platform, thin die adapter, a very well-loved cutting plate. We're going to put our little tree inside the framelit here so we can cut it out. We'll tack it down with a little bit of washi tape. Then I've got that scrap of copper cardstock or copper foil and we're going to cut these two leaf framelits. We can do all this cutting in one pass. All right, so here's our framelits. I love the Stampin' Up! framelits. They cut out the stamped image. Look at the foil leaves here. They're really kind of cool. And the Rooted in Nature stamp set, of course, has a stamp. We used it on our background and that coordinates with each of these framelits. But in addition to a stamp that coordinates with the framelits, there's also an embossing piece in the framelit collection that coordinates with each of those die. So we'll set up now and emboss these. We're gonna add some fun texture. You're gonna start with your platform and then a cutting pad. For this one, I like to use the top one that I don't cut into as much. Then we'll lay our embossing die face up on the cutting pad. And then we'll put our foil face down on the embossing die. And you got a position that you like, you might wanna kind of tack it down, give it a little extra help there. We'll do the same thing here with our three leaf. Just put the foil over the leaf. And then if you wanna tack it down with a little bit of washi tape that'll keep it from shifting. Now on top of that we're gonna lay our blue embossing mat and then our embossing pad and we'll give that a crank. Now wait till you see the difference this little tiny mat makes. 
Look at all that beautiful texture. Look at all that beautiful texture. Isn't that awesome? I just really love the embossing kit. All right, now, so we've done a fun little coloring technique. We're embossing with the Big Shot and Framelits. Now let's get this gorgeous card assembled. Okay, I'm gonna start with my little tree here. I want to bump it up. It's the one thing that's gonna have some dimensionals on back. So I'm going to cut some little strips and then use some cut up minis to just really support the tree. Okay, I'm not quite ready to tack that down yet, so I'm not gonna peel the release. We'll just set it aside for a minute. Let's get our linen thread here, and we're gonna tie it around our greeting. Okay, so what I did here was I'm gonna take a little bit more than the width of your hand, so maybe five inches off the front of your greeting, and then I wrapped it kind of crisscross so that it went over the front of the card three times. So I got a little crisscross and goes a little this way, goes a little that way. And now I'm gonna tie a bow. and threads the way I like it, trim off the excess, and then we're going to adhere to the designer series paper. So we'll flip the sentiment and run some snail or fast fuse if you're still using it down the center of the greeting, and then you want to center the designer series paper right to left and top to bottom behind the greeting. Next up are these leaves, and what I did with them was add a little bit of dry adhesive on the stem end of the leaf. Not much, just a little bit. And then I placed my leaves out the bottom so that I could see all three. You wanna make sure that it stays within the bounds of your card. If it's too far kicked out to the left-hand side, it's gonna go off the edge there. I think that looks pretty good. And then what I wanna do kind of dry fit in my second leaf and I'm looking for kind of a diagonal line there. I like that placement. So let's grab some dry adhesive and again I'm going to go all the way across the back here and then a little bit on these leaves too. Oh no, I'm out of snail. I mean I'm out of fast views. Let me get my snail here. And this is going to go in the bottom half of the card that's centered right to left. Now remember our gorgeous tree. Let's peel the release on this little dude. And then we're just gonna pop it up so that it does not cover the UR in our greeting. Just have to watch the placement of our sentiment. There it is. You are wonderful. I hope that you had fun, learned a little bit about how to use the Big Shot embossing mats, maybe a fun ink and coloring technique there with the tree. If you've got any questions about the project, the techniques, uh, classes in the Chicago area, if there's anything I can do to keep you crafty, email me, marissa at kitchentablestamper.com. If you'd like to purchase the supplies that we used, you can shop 24-7 at marissaalvarez.stampinup.net. Thanks for watching.